Dear Jim, I'm writing to you because today is your ordination. Today is a really, really big moment in your life. And we're going to go New Testament style here, and I'm writing you this letter because sometimes that's the best way to capture your heart for someone. I remember when we first met in Michigan and you were young and you were raw, but you had this look in your eye like you were up for it. Like you would go where you needed to go and talk to who you needed to talk to and learn whatever you needed to learn. I distinctly remember thinking, this guy is going to do great. So first, at the beginning of this letter from me to you, I just want to say watching you grow and watching you thrive and watch you become who you've become has been such a joy for me. So in this letter, I simply want to talk to you about why your ordination is a big deal and why it shows us who you are and reminds us why you are here. And then I want to give you simply one image to leave with that is the image I wish someone would have given me at my ordination. So first off, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a big deep breath. Seriously, a big deep breath. And while you're at it, I want all your family and friends to do the same thing and your lovely wife and your colleagues and your neighbors and whoever else is there. Hi everybody. I want you all to take a nice deep breath. A big inhale and then a big exhale. And then take another one. I'm sure some of you have gotten in the habit of breathing. That's a joke. But take another deep breath. Experts say that for optimal health, we all ought to be breathing around six breaths a minute. So six breaths a minute would be a five second inhale and then a five second exhale. The general estimate from the research I've seen is that most people in the modern world breathe somewhere between 16 and 20 breaths a minute. So we're supposed to gain apparently around 80% of our energy simply from our breath, but that most of us are breathing so quickly, we are moving so fast, that we are only accessing 20% of the energy we could be accessing with our breath if we just slowed it down. So Jim, I want you to take another deep breath, a deep inhale and an exhale, and I want you to look around at all of these people who have gathered today. I want you to look into their eyes, and I want you to see the love that resides there for you. Jim, you are on holy ground. There's this ancient midrash about Moses that I absolutely love. He doesn't take off his sandals, the ancient sages said, because suddenly the ground was holy. He takes off his sandals because he becomes aware that the ground has been holy the whole time. The whole world is God-bathed. It's drenched in the divine. All ground is holy. All moments are sacred. You are breathing. You have received this sacred gift of breath. And in the ancient languages, as you know, the word for breath and the word for spirit are the same word. That all of us as human beings, we have received breath, which is like a physical picture of a deeper spirit reality. We have all received life. When people talk about spirituality, as I understand it, we're talking about the sense that we have all received this gift and what we do with it and how we respond to it matters. It is of utmost importance. I love the line when Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray and he says, Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. It's as if holy be your name is a, is a very first century way of saying, begin your prayer with the acknowledgement that this gift comes from somewhere. The first word about you is that you have received life and it's all holy, and it's all sacred. Everything, as they say, is spiritual. Your ordination, then, is deeply tied in with your role in the world and your role in your community. 
and you're, you're being ordained because the people who love you and have journeyed with you and believe in you have seen that you understand this primal fundamental fact about existence, that it is a gift to be received with gratitude and then we respond to it with joy. Your job is to stand in the midst of the community and remind us that we are on holy ground and that it matters more than we could ever begin to comprehend. I love it when Jacob, this great story in the Hebrew scriptures, Jacob falls asleep by the side of the road, he has this dream and then he wakes up and he says, surely God was in this place the whole time and I, I wasn't aware of it. Your job is to stand in the midst of the community with the bread and the wine and to announce that the bread and the wine are holy because all bread and all wine are holy. This moment is sacred and holy because all moments are sacred and holy. And this is why we need you to take this task unbelievably seriously, Jim, because the modern world is insane. People are moving too quickly, disconnected, far from home, breathing way too fast. I remember hearing the great rabbi Lawrence Kushner say that a rabbi is hired by the community to speak to them about their insanity. Everybody has lost their mind. It's sheer madness. And what we need are leaders like you who are moving just a touch, just a tad slower, who see that it's all sacred, who see that it's electric, who see the divine in an embrace and the holy in every conversation. When Jesus says, I've come that you might have life, you and I both know he's not first and foremost talking about some magical, mythical time someday down the road. He is talking about full presence here and now and the power and sanctity of every moment. People are too busy, moving too fast, living cluttered, shallow lives, sliding down the surface of things, stuffed to the gills and starving at the same time. And your job is to stand in the midst of a community, not to help people escape from the world for a few moments of refuge, but to help give them eyes to see the God who is present in every moment of their lives. The Christ in the common, the divine in the daily. We need you to do this. The reason you are being ordained is because this is who you are and this is what we have seen in you. You understand this about the world. And so as you announce this good news, the reconciliation of all things, that it is finished, that this Jesus is up to something beautiful and powerful in the world. What you're doing is giving us eyes to see and reminding us, inviting us home to the truth that stands at the center of all of it, is that life is the sacred, precious, holy gift, and what we do with it matters. Now, I want to give you an image I wish somebody would have given it to me, but now I get to give it to you, which brings me great joy. Jim, when you get on an airplane, one of the first things they do is they give you the safety instructions, and they generally teach you to how to, how to fasten the seatbelt, because apparently there are those who, this is still fairly complicated. But then they always do what? They talk to you about the oxygen mask in case of loss of pressure. And then they show you a picture and they demonstrate how if there was some sort of calamity to happen on the plane, an oxygen mask would fall down from the ceiling and you would put it, and remember this, they always make this really clear, you would put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then you put it on somebody near you. Because our first instinct is to think of others, generally, because, you know, we're good Americans. And so you're supposed to think of others in a time of calamity, but they make it very clear, put your own oxygen mask on first. Why? Because if you don't put your own mask on first, you can't help anyone else. So here's the deal. You are gonna have people, as I know they already do, and as they have been, want a piece of you. 
They are going to want your time, your energy, your love, your guidance, your wisdom, your teaching, your insight, your perspective, your presence. As a leader, a minister, a pastor, a spiritual teacher, there are always going to be people who want something from you. And the problem is that it's very, very easy to be consumed, because it feels good, honestly, to be consumed with others' needs and wants. And it feels good, and you want to do what Jesus did, which is help. You want to help heal. You want to help guide. You want to comfort. You, you want to help people along. But the problem is it is very easy to give and give and give until you've emptied the bucket and you have nothing left. First, Put the mask on yourself. What is it that feeds your soul? What are the rituals and routines and practices that fill you with life? Do that. Take all of your vacation days. Ask for more. Turn off your cell phone. Do what it takes to fill your own tank. Because the real secret here is that you would give what you give out of the overflow that's happening in your own life. And what happens is for many people, they give all they have, there's nothing left, and then we lose them. Good, powerful, needed leaders burn out and fade away because they didn't understand you got to put your own mask on first. This is not selfish. This is not self-centered. This is not a lack of compassion. This is a deeply held conviction that you care for yourself and you allow out of that the overflow to spill out onto others. And you will have a long, beautiful, joyous, never boring always interesting journey. Jim, I am so proud of you. I hope this day marks for you, not the beginning of something, but the affirmation of who you've always been, who you are, and who you will be. Celebrate, enjoy, Point out the electric, holy, sacred nature of every moment to everybody around you and put your own mask on first. Grace and peace to you on this day now more than ever. Your brother, Rob Bell.